and welcome back to the third and final part of the show all about metrics. Uh, let's talk about vision, the end vision. We know where to start, what customers are going to be aiming for. I don't think, you know, we mentioned before, you know, what does good versus bad look like? I think it's incredibly hard to do that. There's always going to be a better. Um, what does good enough look like in terms of metrics? What would you say would be a, a comfortable position to be in? So I'm going to advise everybody to look at it from a crawl, walk, and run perspective. Crawl may be simply tagging my infrastructure and collecting a very bare bones unit metric, such as what is my cost per CPU or cost per gigabyte stored. As you progress into a walk phase, then you're starting. You're going to want to start bringing in like that business context that I mentioned. Uh, how, how many resources are in cost of goods sold or production? How many are in non-production? Well, what's my revenue for the business? Oh, now I can marry my revenue to my expenses. You know, very, it's simple, but having some business context in it. And then as you progress even further, this is where the real unit economics of very specific pieces of your business are going to come out. Um, Boomi, we integrate. What is my cost per integration? What is my cost per specific customer, a large customer, a small customer, so on and so forth? You may need to have some tagging within your application itself, not just the infrastructure, that you can measure and track You know how much gigabytes are being used by a customer, for example. But that may require some very in-depth work with engineers to make sure that we're tagging the application. Um, I would also like to say a note about cost allocation of shared resources. You may have some very specific shared resources, a lot of them potentially, maybe a little. Um, have it, being able to have a way to start cutting up those shared resources to be able to map them to whatever you know, business unit one, business unit two, so on and so forth. I would typically see that. I probably call that more advanced because you really need to have an understanding. You know, say I have a array of log storage and you know, product one is taking up 300 gigs of it. Product two is taking up 100 gigs and product three is taking up you know, 10. You have to be able to allocate up the cost of that particular infrastructure uh, to be able to allocate you know, across those three particular business units. You may also want to look at fully loaded costs from a perspective of licensing. Uh, if you use any third-party software, well, you know, you're likely monitoring your production environment, maybe your non-production environment too. How are you going to be able to start factoring in those costs as well to get that total cost of ownership or fully loaded costs? Um, and how we sort of said, you know, start start easy, more granular, add more and more. How do you know when you should stop panicking? You know, you add good enough. Let's not worry too much. We're, we're at good enough. How do you know when you're at that stage? And how long do you think it would typically take to get there? That's a great question. It's totally going to depend on your business and how big you are. Um, my, my guidance would be you may pull up a right sizing report in AWS or CloudAbility or whatever application you're using. And you may see, you know, a ton, a earth shattering amount of money in there. And that may panic you, <laughs> but you have to kind of take it with, with a grain of salt and some context to understand that, Hey, maybe it's not worth doing all of these initiatives because we're more focused on growing as a company. We're more focused on, well, or maybe it's just not good use cases for right sizing, whatever. Um, I stopped panicking when I had a good grasp of how we were using and being able to work with the engineering teams to showcase them their usage and provide that data to them with areas of opportunity that they can use to make themselves more efficient. And I took comfort in knowing the fact that we are a growing company. So, hey, if we are going to get bigger, our AWS costs or whatever you know, cloud provider you may be using are likely going to go up. But if we have a way of being able to define that unit piece, 
that kind of takes you off the defensive a little bit when somebody comes at you and says, hey, your price is too, or your costs are too expensive. You know, why is that? You can say, well, X, Y, and Z, our unit costs have gone down. We have actually made a substantial amount of improvements in optimizing our infrastructure, and it led to a achievement of X amount of dollars, right? If you can start talking that language with your constituents being your finance team, your engineering team, your leadership, it gives you the confidence to know that you are you know, moving in the right direction and you know your you know your stuff and you know your business. So that's, yeah, that's my little story blurb about at least myself and when I became confident. Now we're yeah. growing still, uh, Nathan. So it's, you know, you could ask me again in three months and I may give you a different answer and say I'm panicking again, but having the, the understanding of your business and, and where you're headed will give you the you know, the lifeblood to know that you're going in the right direction or you need to take some sort of action to get yourself back on track. Yeah, I think what I take from that is you, know, you can make a business, a, a good informed business decision with anyone that you speak to. You've got an answer for a question. You can make a decision, what should we do, what we shouldn't do. The fact that you're mm -hmm. able to do that, I think is where you're drawing that comfort from. So that's a beautiful takeaway. Um, challenges and roadblocks. Unit yeah. economics is beautiful. They're the perfect tool for business. Uh, for FinOps, they help you to defend that beneficial increase in spend. Um, how do you get people to own it? And are there roadblocks to adopting those metrics? Uh, how do you get owners to care about them? How, what, what have you seen that's worked? This is the number one on, in the uh, FinOps Foundation for two years running now of how to get engineers to take action <laughs> for, uh, for, you know, their usage. Right. And it's always a great discussion. Um, I'm going to be talking in terms about of, this. I'll, I'll, I'll focus on the metrics. Has anyone sort of okay. ever not wanted to adopt a metric or like something like a unit metric? Has anyone ever kicked back and say, I don't care how much it costs us to do what our business does. Has anyone pushed back against that? Um, is there been any, roadblocks to adopting good metrics that make sense to the business? I get pushed back sometimes. And usually it's around the lines of uh, measuring the, I, I guess I'll say the trade-offs in a well-architected configuration. You know, I am using a configuration that's using every single availability zone in a region and I'm talking to a centralized database in you know, one of the availability zones. So I'm going to get hit with all these bandwidth charges, potentially, if I'm sending a lot of data. And the, the typical answer I'll get you know, from talking, uh, providing the data points at least, is you know, we don't sacrifice customer availability. And I think I'm like, well, you know, our, how many nines do we need? Do we need 20 nines or do we need four nines you know, for applications? So I... We'll get into those types of arguments, but that's, you know, at the end of, I stopped myself there. You see that? You like to see what I did there? <laughs> when the sun uh, goes down. Yeah, definitely. It, so it, it's a mix. Usually I, I, I get the reliability concerns and customer concerns over say, you know, cost and, uh, from a metric perspective, having more reliability likely is going to cost more. And that's most of the time okay. And it, it all depends if on your SLA and what your commitment is to customers. And I, I totally agree. Uh, the important piece is to have some sort of empathy with the engineers as well. You got to understand where they're coming from. Uh, FinOps requires you to kind of put on multiple hats. You know, one is you may need to sit with engineers and understand how an engineer operates. Same with finance, same with executive leadership and product. If you can walk the line in all of those three facets, you're going to be positioned in a way that you can have empathy with the business as well as the rest of the organization, which is important. Yeah, in terms of getting engineers, the, the phrase I used to always love to say, I forget the exact number, uh, but you, you typically get that from maybe a government um, department, you know, we're funded by the government. We have endless money or we're a startup. We've just gotten funding. Money's not a problem for us. Yeah, yeah, and I just yeah. want to say, well, I could give you about 25 billion reasons why that's not the case and money is important to you. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, well, that was NASA's budget to get to the moon. NASA had a budget to get to the moon. Like one of the largest projects in human history had a budget 
and you're telling me you don't? Honestly, do you think that's the case? Um, so I think yeah. I always a bit of grounding. I would normally stop people and they sort of think, yeah, you, you got a point. At, at some at some point, that money is going to run out. Um, uh, yeah, at some point, it will. Uh, hopefully not. But it, we all have a, a budget here at the end of the day. And my guidance always is you know, to engineers, especially and leaders. You know, let's the the budget is a target, but let's talk about it. You know, if we're going to be over budget for whatever reason, okay, let's at least have a conversation about it and see if we're going to be adding that business value. If we are, okay, maybe that's not such a bad thing. Maybe another team is also under budget, but it's a conversation piece. And that that's what I like. That's what how I operate at least. I'm sure some organizations are not in that type of operation where, you know, it's a line. And if you go over that line, you know, heaven forbid, you know, you must get yourself back underneath that line. I just use it as a conversation piece to talk and understand from an empathy perspective. Well, and it's good to understand, well, why did we go over the line and where the areas we can Mm -hmm. look into it? Um, And you mentioned before, unit economics has sort of saved the day. We've been able to come in and say, hey, relax, increase in spend was due to increase in growth and something mm-hmm. else. Has there been a case where metrics have not saved the day? Your, your, your beautiful defensible shield of a metric has not helped you out or, or hasn't actually um, yet yeah, provided the insights that it should have? Yes. <laughs> I, I've one time used a specific unit metric that was comparing engineering teams to each other from a person perspective, how many you know heads are on that team to a uh, resource cost perspective. And it did not go as I expected it to go <laughs> because you're comparing apples to oranges. When you have teams that are focused only on infrastructure, testing infrastructure, building new small environments that are you know somewhat mimicking production it is not fair to compare that team to a team that works only on one specific tiny use case of writing you know code for a ui framework for example so i backed off that metric pretty quickly and focused more on all right let's compare let's compare to ourselves over time versus let's compare versus each other. Like that makes it much, a much more fair game. So that's my lesson learned for everybody out there. Um, It may not be fair to compare engineering teams to other engineering teams. You need to understand what each one of them is working on. So an an artist will not have the same output as a house painter, in other words. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> very true you cannot compare a <laughs> to a, i mean not always the case but yeah i would i would definitely agree with that nice excellent all right that is a wrap for this episode thank you very much eric for coming along uh, as i mentioned before if you have any questions or any feedback on this show pop a comment below uh, or email us at feedback at finopsfridays.com. Uh, Eric, what would be your top tips, metrics? Where would people go for a bit more uh, in-depth information? Oh, my goodness. Come to uh, the FinOps Foundation, and you can pop up a KPI, not a KPI dashboard, but a, a number of KPIs that have been created by the foundation. And you certainly can come into finops.org. At, sorry, you can come into the Slack channel as well and join the KPI channel that we have in which you'll see Nathan talking about making sure that it's aligned to business and not so much, you know, RIs and coverage percentages as we uh, keep coming back to that particular topic. Um, you can find me at Boomi and please check out um, Boomi at www.boomi.com. We will help automate your business and integrate your business together so you really don't have to spend all that time learning APIs and building your own applications internally, unless you really want to. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the show.